Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Definition and with the release of Doctor Sleep taking us back to the world of The Shining, I thought it was the perfect time to break down the big villain of the piece, Rose the Hat and her group of followers, The True Knot. As chosen by you, we're going to be covering what we know about the group, their abilities and the differences in their depiction from the book and the film. Now there will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the movie yet and don't want anything ruined, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Without the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into our breakdown of Rose the Hat and the True Knot. Okay, so the film Doctor Sleep actually spans a great distance of time, beginning just after the events of The Shining in the early 1980s and running all the way up to modern day. Whilst we primarily focus on Danny Torrance, a strong psychic, there also exists the True Knot, who we witness operating from the 1980s to present. We watch as Danny grows older, his life torn apart by alcoholism, whilst the True Knot remain ageless due to the fact that they are able to take the life force, or as they call it steam, from psychics. The group are basically vampires that live a nomadic lifestyle, moving from state to state in a convoy, preying on the weak and unsuspecting. Because of this, they have attained a certain kind of immortality that keeps them immune to most natural causes, though they are able to be killed through more conventional methods. What Doctor Sleep boils down to and portrays in both its protagonist Danny and the antagonist The True Knot is a battle with addiction. Danny, similar to his father, is an alcoholic that is neglectful, less caring of others, and because of this it leads to the death of an infant after its mother overdoses. Danny is really torn apart by this and the guilt that he feels over this act causes him to up sticks and start a new life where he will not allow his demons to take over him. Mirroring this, the True Knots are addicts too, addicted to steam, but unlike Danny, they do not take any responsibility for the pain that they inflict, and thus they operate almost with a sense of glee, too causing the deaths of children, but reveling in it instead of being disgusted. This is the main conflict of Doctor Sleep, and the entire storyline is about Danny trying to protect a child from succumbing to the addiction of others that do not possess the same morality that he does. There's a pivotal moment in Doctor Sleep in which they have the choice between their addiction and doing the right thing. Danny is offered a drink and he turns it down, thus putting his demons to rest and going on to do the right thing that has an overall positive outcome. Juxtaposing this, after the True Knot are wiped out, just leaving Rose by herself, she has the option to let Abra go, but her greed and craving for steam get the better of her and this ultimately leads to her downfall. The True Knot themselves are fascinating and they have a long storied history and way of life that makes them one of the most unique horror creations in all of Stephen King's back catalogue. When describing themselves during one of their many rituals throughout the work, they state, we are the true knot and we endure. We are the chosen ones, we are the fortunate ones. What is tied cannot be untied. Here is a woman, will she join us? Will she tie her life to our life? This pretty much sums up their entire belief system and mindset. The True Knot believe themselves to be above all, a closely knit group that operate almost as a hive mind through their psychic link. They justify the atrocities that they carry out because it keeps the group as one and thus there is a shared lack of morality that empowers them to go on and carry out more depraved acts. Some of the members of the group have lives which span millennia and though there has never been a specific date ever set for when they first started out, in the film there is lip service paid to the fact that they have existed throughout the middle ages and even so far back as the Roman Empire. Because of this they have not built natural immunities towards modern day diseases and in the original source material the majority of them are wiped out after one of the members of the group catches measles from feasting on a boy with a disease. He passes this on to the camp, who slowly begin to succumb to the disease and die from it. This differs from the film adaptation in which they are lured into an ambush after Danny and his friend Billy use Abra as bait to draw them out and then shoot them from vantage points with sniper rifles. Both situations though eventually lead to Rose being the sole survivor. Now in the book the True Knot are made up of six members and though this differs slightly for the film adaptation most notably in their names, I thought I'd stick to the main source material and the way that they are described in it. I'll get to Rose last as I want to cover her more in depth, but the second in command is named Crow Daddy. He is Rose's lover and operates with extreme loyalty. 
Crow Daddy's real name is Henry Rothman, and whilst he does not possess the psychic powers of the other members, he is able to track people possessing the ability to shine. In the film, he dies due to his arrogance, and he does not wear a seatbelt, which allows Danny, who is possessing Abra at the time, to kill him in a car accident. Grandpa Flick is the next in line, and he is the eldest of the group. Early on in the storyline, he dies, and this makes the group worry that their days are too numbered, and thus they desperately attempt to get more steam, which makes them set their sights on Abra. Snake by Andy is up next, and in Doctor Sleep, we see the recruitment process of the True Knot mainly through her eyes. Andy is known as a pusher, and someone that can will people into doing her bidding through commands that she tells them vocally. In the film, she performs this on Billy, who she wills into killing himself, and we see in the movie that very few are actually immune to her. Before her recruitment, Andy gained her nickname for luring child predators on dates with her, putting them to sleep and then carving snake bite-like scars into their cheeks. In the source material, due to her dislike of men, which was caused by the abuse that her father dealt onto her as a child, she becomes a lesbian and is in a relationship with our next member, Silent Sari. Silent Sari gains her name due to her self-consciousness about her speech impediment. However, this also plays into the fact that she has the ability to move in complete silence when not being looked at. This allows her to sneak up on prey without alerting them, and she's a very terrifying foe. Lastly is Barry Smith, who is pretty much the one that brings all of the true knot to their eventual fate. Barry ends up contracting the measles, and thus the group all end up dead due to the disease. In the book, he's white but gains a very bad nickname due to his slanted eyes, which I don't want to get into because I'll get demonetized, but you can google it and yeah, Stephen King, damn, that's not very good. Anyway, lastly is their leader, Rose the Hat, an incredibly beautiful woman that has gained her name from wearing a magician's top hat the majority of the time. Though we never get confirmation of her true age, we do know that Rose was born in County Antrim in Ireland, where she was known by her true name, Rose O'Hara. Like many Irish citizens, she emigrated to America during the formation of the United States and lived on the western frontier before being recruited by the True Not members at the time. She has operated with the group since the 19th century and due to her amazing abilities quickly rose, pun intended, through the ranks to become their leader. Rose is by far the most powerful out of the group and she is capable of locating people that possess the Shining across vast distances. This allows her to pick up on Abra Stone, someone with even greater psychic abilities than her, and she quickly becomes Rose's obsession. Rose is a cold and calculating person that hates all other humans outside of the True Knot and refers to them as rubes. Throughout her life, she has tortured countless children to death, and due to her extremely high IQ and intuitiveness, she is able to quickly create strategies and plans in her head that will allow her to move from target to target, capturing them in efficient ways that allow for them to conserve their energy. Due to her lack of emotion towards other living things, Rose plans to kidnap Abra and hold her in captivity, torturing her slowly over a long period of time in order to farm her for steam almost like a milking cow. This is paid lip service to in the film, and the reason behind this is because the True Knot simply don't possess enough canisters to contain all of Rose's steam. Though she has a sexual relationship with Crow Daddy, she also has one with Snake by Andy at one point, and it's clear that she's not really tied down. Rose is described by many as the most beautiful woman that they've ever seen, however for those who possess The Shining, they view her as a woman with an unnaturally wide mouth that has just one single tooth in it, resembling a walrus's tusk. After becoming obsessed with Abra, she pools all of her resources into tracking her down, unaware that she is being looked after by Danny. The book and ending of the film differ slightly due mainly to their ties to their respective source material, and at the end of The Shining book, the Overlook Hotel is destroyed, and thus the final act of the story takes place on the grounds of where it stood. After Abra and the character go into a psychic standoff, Danny pushes Rose off an observation platform, and she falls to her death, breaking her neck upon impact. In the film, at the Overlook, Danny unleashes all of the spirits that are housed within his mind from the location, and they swarm her, feasting upon her in the same way that she preyed on so many innocents. It's an awesome end to an awesome character, and a group of unforgettable foes that reminds us why we should not give in to our addictions.
Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the tuna and which one of the group is your favourite. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out my full breakdown of Doctor Sleep which will be linked at the end. We go over everything that you need to know about the film including its plot and the meaning behind it so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. I just want to give a huge thank you for everyone who took part in the poll. I will be doing another video from that list but I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to come chat to me after this then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT or head over to my Discord server which will be linked in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with all the latest videos on the channel, so hopefully I see you over on one of them very soon. We're also giving away a free copy of the Marvel Phase 3 Part 1 box set on Blu-ray which contains Civil War, Doctor Strange, Homecoming, Ragnarok and more, and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on Rose and the True Knots in the comment section below. The winner is going to be chosen on the 15th of November and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.